Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Stuttera. Keep in mind that this is a prototype. There's a link in the description to Stuttera's page on GameFound where the crowdfunding campaign can give you all the details. Have a look if you feel like it. So, how do you play Stuttera? When you set up the game, you pick a story. That's nothing big, it's just a small idea of what's going on in the world of Statera, but it does tell you exactly how long the game will be and what is needed to win the game. I have chosen this story, Banishing the Gods. As you can see, it's only a little bit of text, it's not a role-playing game. It's specifically for three players. It is played over six rounds, then the game is over, and here it says what the winning conditions are. One player is playing as one kind of people in Statera, the Fawns. And the other two players are gods, one as the dragons and one as the Ferun. The player who is the Fawns immediately wins the game if at any point during those six rounds, there are no more temples on the game board. This is a temple. If after six rounds there are still temples on the game, then the god who has the most meeples on the scales wins the game. I'm playing as the dragons, so all my meeples would be placed on this side of the board. If I had chosen a different story to play, then the number of rounds is different, and so is the winning condition. Just read what it says on the story page, it's only a little bit of information. The rest of this page shows what the additional rules are, but in this video I will be explaining the general rules. First, what is a round? A round is usually when every player has had a turn. For this story, it says the player who is the Fawns gets two turns every round. Fawns, Dragons, Fawns, Ferun. In this story, that is one round. Next, what do you do when it's your turn? That's easy, because it's written on your own player board. Just go through those steps, and when you're done, it's the next player's turn. The people of Statera are the Fawns, but in a different story you will also have these blue Chompas. The Fawns and the Chompas have the same instructions on their player boards. The green player and blue player have the same steps. Only the green cards and the blue cards are different. If you are playing as the Dragons, your turn is these steps. If you're the Faroon, you go through these steps when it's your turn. The Staturans are easier to play with than the gods. I'll explain each character in a moment, but this is basically it. This is how you play Statera. You pick a story, that will tell you how long you play the game and what is needed to win. Each story has its own small set of additional rules. Alright, let's go into detail. If you are the green player, the fawns, or the blue player, the chompas, what do you do when it's your turn? Step 1. Add new people to the board. Step 2. If you want, you can add one new action card to your board. Step 3. If you want, you can do up to two actions. There are two actions always available, printed on your board, and you can add actions with cards here. Step 4. If you have any of these event cards, you must play them now. Let's go through those again in more detail. Step 1. Add new people. You must add as many of your own player figures as you have buildings on the board in your own color. For example, on this space there are two green buildings, so you add two green people to this space. And on this space there is one green building, so you add one green person to that. If one of those buildings happens to be a temple, 
it will be to the side of the space. On one side, it shows a leaf icon that belongs to the dragon gods. On the other side, it shows a cog icon. That's the Faroon god. If you have a temple anywhere in your own color, you put the meeple next to that instead of in the middle of the space. Step 2. If you want, you can go through your action cards and choose one to add to your player board. These are the action cards. The other cards are weapons and they will show a weapon on the back as well. But it's not free to add a card. Each card has a price on it. Here, in Skulls. That means you have to kill your own people to get this card. It's up to you which ones you take. If you take it from the middle of a space, you take it back into your own supply. If a meeple has moved to the side of that space, it has to go to the god it believes in. So if it's on the leaf side, it goes to the dragons, place it on the disc, the sanctuary. If the meeple is on the cog side, it goes to the Faroon and place it on their disc. When you have paid, you can place the card on your own player board here. In case all three slots are already uh, filled up, you have to place the card on top of one of them and that card will be out of the game. Keep in mind that you don't have to buy a card if you don't want to, then you can just skip this step. Step 3 is also optional. Only step 1 and 4 are mandatory. But I suggest you do it, because step 3 is do up to 2 actions. You can choose between the actions that are written on the cards that you have placed here on the side, or the 2 actions that are printed on your board. You can do 2 different actions or do the same action twice. It's up to you. The move action. You can move as many of your own meeple from one space to the space next to it, but only if that is space is empty or if you already own that space. You can see the roads that connect the spaces. If a meeple was in the middle of a space, it will go to the middle of the other space. If a meeple was on the leaf side, it goes to the leaf side of the other space. And the same goes for if it believes in the Faroon, then it will move to the next cog space. The other basic action is placing one or more of your buildings to a space on the board. You can only do that where you have people, because the cost of the buildings is also people. And you can only build in the middle of the space, not on the sides of the space. The people need to be removed from the board. When you build your first building in a circle, you have to remove one person from the space where you build it. When you build your second building there, you have to remove two people. And you can only build it on an empty square in that space that is meant for buildings. If both squares already have a building, you can't put a new building in that circle. But if you have built both buildings inside the circle, you can take an event card. Now, it is possible that you have built a building here, but one of the gods took it and moved it to the side. That means there is another space free. But that doesn't mean you can pretend as if that building on the side doesn't exist. It's possible to build a third or fourth building in a space. And for that, you do have to remove three or four of your own meeples from that area. If they're atheists, you can take them back. If they are believers, they go to the god they believe in. Those are the two actions you can all, always do. But I'll also explain a few actions that are on the cards because they're important to know. For example, there is this action where you can take all the meeples that are on the sides of a space, the believers, and bring them all back to the middle, making them atheists.
When you're playing this game, it might be something you really want to do. There is this action that says you can remove a legate. A legate is a player figure of one of the gods. The red one that will be on the leaf side or the yellow one on the cog side. If you want to remove one of those, you have to remove three of your own figures that are on the other side. If I want this red legged gone, I have to remove three peoples from this opposite side. And they go to the Ferun disc, of course. And the last action for a Stateron I'll explain is attack. Because green fawns and blue chompas aren't friends. When you do the attack action, you start by doing exactly the same as a move action. And then you see whoever is the strongest and that player is the winner. Each meeple counts as one battle strength and each house counts as one. Before you start counting, you have a chance to play your battle cards, the ones with a weapon on it. The player who is being attacked gets to play the first card, then the other player, and you keep going until both players have decided they don't want to play any more cards. Count up your battle points. If you have the most, you win the fight. The winner can keep as many player pieces there as the difference is in battle points. So if the winner had 10 points and the loser had 7 points, that means the winner can keep 3 player pieces of their choice in that area. All the other pieces are removed from the board. The people are removed as usual. If they are believers, they go to their god on the disc. In case it's a tie, the entire space has to be wiped clean completely. It's empty. And then finally, step four. In case you have any of these event cards, now is the time you can play them. In fact, you have to. You can't keep them for later. If you got more than one card this turn, you have to resolve the cards in the order you receive them. Place them open on the table, do whatever it says, and then put it back face down on the bottom of the event deck. Alright, that was your turn if you were one of the people. If you're one of the gods, things are very different. Let's start with the red ones, the dragons. If you are playing as that, this is what you do when it's your turn. Step 1. If you want... You can add a card to your player board. And if you do, you also place one of your figures on the board. This is a legate. Step 2. If you want, you can have each legate do up to two actions. Step 3. You can do one of these dragon's lair actions from your player board. Step 4. If you want, you can take up to two meeples from your sanctuary disc and place them on the scale on your side. If you do, you get to take an event card that you can play at any point during the game. Even when it's another player's turn, it goes face down on this space in front of you. That is a dragon's turn. Let's go over those again. Step 1. Training Leggets. If you want, you can add a card to your player board. If your board is empty, you must put it either here by Thief or Aviator. You can't put them here yet, that's upgrading. I'll get to that in a moment. So, you place one of your cards here or here on the leftmost space. And then you can take one of your player figures, place it anywhere on the game board. But of course, only on the leaf side of a space, because that is the icon of the dragon gods. Remember, this is a legate. The space where you placed the card has a special ability written on it, and that is now active. For example, the one here at the thief says that whenever a dragon legate is removed from the board, it can take all the people who are in that same space with it. 
all the dragon believers from that area. But what if you want to move to the right? If during the game you happen to have placed a figure of one of the people from your disc to here, then it is unlocked and you can do the upgrade. The next space will need two to unlock. You can unlock spaces in any order you like. You can have more than one card on your player board. For example, this one is already here, but in a later turn you can place another card here or here on the leftmost spaces. Moving on, step two of the dragon's turn. It's possible you have one or more legates on the board. Each one that you have uh, can do two actions. The ones that are written on your player board here. Legates actions. You can move. A legate can move one or two spaces. Just follow the roads between campsites. And always make sure you place yourself on the correct side of the space. The leaf side. A legate can build a temple. If there happens to be a house in the middle of that space where the legate is, you can slide it to your side. Place it in the square where the temple is supposed to be. And then mark it with one of your own tokens like this. You only have three of these tokens because you can have only three temples on the game board. When the players who are the Staturans uh, have to place new people on the board, the ones that are placed by this house are automatically Dragon Believers. They stay on this side of the space. Another thing you can do, uh, have your Legates do, is slide one of the people that are not on your side over to you. You can take one from the middle, or even one that's on the opposite side, the people who believe in the other god. But you can only do that if there isn't a legate of theirs in that space. If there is, those people are protected and you can't steal them. A legate can take one of the people that is on your side and place it onto your disc. And the last thing a legate can choose to do is challenge a legate. Pick a fight with a yellow one from the other side of the same space. When you do this, as the challenger, tell your opponent how many souls you are going to bet from your sanctuary disc. Your opponent can bet nothing and remove its legate from the board, or bet more and have you be removed from the board. All souls that were used in the bet go to the Staturan people players. Those were the optional legged actions. Step 3 is also optional. The Dragon's Lair actions. You can do one of these. You can either unlock an area by placing the right number of souls onto it. One here or two here. You can unlock more than one space in the same action. Or you can take all the dragon believers from one space on the board and place them onto your disc. That's called Temple Ascension. There has to be a temple, your temple on the board to do this. And the third action to choose from is Sanctuary Charge. Then you can turn your disc from the left to the right. What that is for, I'll explain in the next step. Step 4. The last thing in the dragon's turn, if you want, you can take up to two souls from your disc and place them on the scale. Having the most here is usually what wins you the game. If you did this, then you can take the top card from the event deck and place it face down in front of you here. You can't look at it. And that is the end of your turn. In case your disc is turned to the right, then instead of two souls, you can put up to four souls on the scale. When you've done that, you have to turn the disc back to the left. 
Before I move on to the Farron, as I said, a god can play any event card at any point during the game, in your turn or in another player's turn. If you do, this is how that goes. First, you announce you are going to play an event card. Flip over the top one. Look at the number that is top right here. The player or players who are the people have to place this many people from their supply on the board. The players can choose where, but of course they have to come out of the building of theirs that is on that god's side of that space. For example, if I'm the dragons and I play this card, the green player has to place two green people on a space where they have a greenhouse on the leaf side. For example, here. If there is no temple, I'm not quite sure how that goes, but the designers will be happy to explain that. When you've done that, you pick one of the people players and tell them which of these two actions they should do. When that's done, this card goes to the bottom of the deck up here. Same goes for the Pharaoh. They are also a god, so they use event cards in this way as well. Speaking of the Pharaoh, they are the last one I have to explain. What do you do when you are the Pharaoh and it's your turn? Same as the other players, you look at your player board and go through the steps. But as you can see, there are only three steps for this one. Don't worry, you also have four steps. Because you start here at the top. Step one. Check if you have any yellow leggets on the board. If you don't, you can place one anywhere you like on the cock side of a space. Step two. If you want, you can do legged actions. The actions are the same, but it works a little differently. Step three, you can do one of these Pharaoh actions, just like the dragons have to the dragon lair actions. Step four, if you want, you can put up to three souls on the scale on your side. If you do, you can place an event card face down in front of you. Well, you can already tell it sounds a little similar to the dragon's turn, so this will go faster. Step 1. If you don't have any leggets on the board, place one. If you do, you have to skip this step. Step 2. You can do the same legged actions as the dragons, but you can only do one action for each legged you have on the board, and you get one action extra. So if you have two leggeds on the board, you can do three legged actions. And different from the dragons, it doesn't have to be linked to a specific legged taking the action. Step three, you can do the Faroon action. There are four options to choose from. If you want, you can put one or more of your yellow leggeds on the board, on the cog side of a space, of course. For each one that you place, you have to remove one of your believers. But instead of taking them from the board, you have to take them from your disc. Give it back to the player. Another option is take two souls from your disc and give them back to the players. And then a meeple has to be placed by each one of your Faroon temples. The buildings that are marked with your yellow token. Every single one gets a person added to that space. The third Faroon action is taking all your believers from one space and placing them onto your disc. And the last action you can choose to do is upgrade yourself. Sanctuary Improvement. When you do this action, you can place as many souls from your disc to any of these empty spaces on your player board. As soon as all spaces are filled, 
you have that particular upgrade for the rest of the game. What each upgrade will do for you is written here on your player board. It says the number of the upgrade, 1 through 5, and after the number, it says what it does. End your Faerun turn with step 4. Just like the dragons, you can place souls from your disc onto the scale. But as the Faerun, you can place up to 3 souls there. If you placed at least one, you can take the top event card and place it face down in front of you without looking. And you can use that the same way the dragons can. And that's it. Those are all the basic rules for Statera. When you pick a story during the setup of the game, you will see that each story has some adjustments or additional rules. Those will be in effect for the entire game. If you have made it this far into the video, I'm sure you have a good idea of how Statera is played. And I hope it sounds interesting. Interesting enough to have a look at their GameFound page. If you have any other questions, they are very happy to answer them over there. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.